Great to have you back. And now taking the conversation to the Federal Capital Territory, the Nigerian Immigration Service yesterday put out an, uh, a warning on alerts to residents of the FCT of possible terrorist attacks um, after, of course, intelligence reports. And, uh, the, of course, there was information that certain terrorist elements were infiltrating the FCT from Mali, um, led by a certain Dramane Udali and Zahid Aminon, uh, with, uh, of, of course, uh, Nigerian accomplices also. We're speaking this morning with uh, security analyst and expert, Yahuza Getso. Good morning, Mr. Getso. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Great to have you on the program. Uh, so let's get your thoughts on this. Uh, for some, you know, it's, it's relief, you know, that this information has been put out and so people would be, you know, on alert. But for others, there's a lot, you know, that is still, a lot of questions that still need to be asked. Uh, the persons in question, have they been arrested? Um, you know, the Nigerian accomplices, have they also been, you know, accosted? You know, so, there's so much. Um, what would you say are the most important uh, parts that need to be talked about here? Well, um, the problem is, usually this warning has been passed sovereignly by uh, different uh, agencies of government, especially the issue of migration alike. But the question is, you don't have anything on ground as far as plan to secure the lives and property of people within the FCT and other environments. The outskirts of the FCT have been posing a number of threats, uh, which uh, I know since uh, 2017. I have alerted the government about the presence of uh, Boko Haram between Nasarawa, um, either Boko Haram or Isaac or whatever, uh, between Nasarawa and FCT and uh, between FCT and Okoji, as well as the uh, FCT and Niger. Not until when an attack was launched, then the governor of Niger State come out and make this open pronouncement that uh, he has the presence of Boko Haram or whatever. So the issue is, yes, of course, the Nigerian immigration has alerted public. So, but what so that intelligence, and how are they working with other security operatives? And have they apparent apprehended the, the culprits? Or oh, if they are not doing so, there is no any signal around FCC that, that you are having such a threat in practice. Because what people will want to see is the, emerging, the emergence of uh, stuff and such, the emergence of um, uh, probably some intelligence or operation activities, uh, probably uh, a show of power or show of force, that uh, the security personnel will be deployed to strategic places as well as uh, other public places. But I want you to be rest assured, even though the message has been sent to the public by the authorities, but when you check around, even in the, in the midnight, anything from 9, 10 and upwards, there are many places that we know we have known to be vulnerable usually in December. So, but we have not seen any presence of any security uh, plan towards uh, enhancing the, 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 the security and um, also uh, having a, a, a presence of security operations. Uh, moving around, uh, harnessing and uh, probably conducting uh, schemic operations that will help and encourage the public, uh, the, the citizenry and the, uh, the residents of FCT that the government is really serious. And the question, other question is, what really make, what really uh, Mali in, uh, interest have in Nigeria? Or Malian? And why Malian? And what is the source? of this information and how does government deal with the source of information in order to transform and um, ensure that uh, they secure the, 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 the FCT, the environment of uh, Niger, um, Poki, as well as the uh, Nasarawak and their life.
as well as Kaduna. So, uh, if if something is is uh, if something may happen now, be rest assured that the result you will get is disappointment. You see what happened yesterday in Medellin. Hours before, the, when president was going to tell the whole world that he is making a progress in fight against Boko Haram. Boko Haram uh, used the opportunity to welcome him by detonating a number of bombs and other explosives. This is really disgracing and embarrassing. And at the same time, the president went there and telling people that the security is much better than what he, he than before he came to the government, which I really disagree in totality. Well, Mr. Getzo, um, like I said, there's so many questions, um, you know, from uh, from uh, different angles. Um, what are citizens expected to do um, when there is an alert like this? Residents of the FCT, um, and also, do, would you expect, you know, that these persons' faces should be made public? Um, and, and, of course, shared across um, you know, um, media organizations, uh, television stations, and, 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 the, and the likes, for people to be aware. And in what ways can people in the FCT protect themselves after information like this is put out? Well, the only way the uh, residents of the FCT can protect themselves from these and uh, the threat and, uh, and its allies um, is, uh, one, to avoid the vulnerable places uh, like uh, public places because probably the attack may be to most churches, uh, markets, as well as other crowded places. That is one. Two, uh, the next thing to do is to ensure that they follow the protocol, the due process, due process of, of security protocols ensure that uh, they avoid staying late and coming out very early. And three, to have or to, 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 to generate or to mobilize uh, contact numbers from the security operators in case of emergency, a call can be made. And four, uh, most of the areas, they have a local vigilance. Even though the local vigilance are handcuffed, because they are not having uh, uh, the right arms to probably uh, uh, respond to such attack if it will be made by by uh, what do you call it uh, uh, the, the, the the country the suspected uh, 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 alerted country, and then try to ensure that they lock all their houses and secure their families in their uh, apartments and um, uh, um, uh, other houses around and to minimize uh, old hour uh, outing so that uh, unless and uh, until it is very necessary like hospital and uh, more otherwise. Okay. Um, and ensure that they also communicate, number seven, to communicate with one another, especially in the suspected must suspected vulnerable location. So at least their relationship and their friends can be carried along. And at the same time, people can put their eyes uh, on either WhatsApp groups and others. Because definitely if there are such attempts, yeah. uh, someone somewhere will quickly be sending the message. Because the network or making a phone, you know, to be feasible all the time. Yeah, and that's the, that's reason, the, that's the reason I asked her earlier, if you can quickly um, uh, respond to this, would they be asking for too much uh, that the faces of these people, the, the pictures of these persons be made public? Sorry, come again? I'm, ask, I'm saying, will it be asking for too much that the faces or pictures of these uh, suspects be made public? Well, the question is, you know, most of the criminals in West African states not Nigeria in particular. They don't have much. If you look at the rebels in Nigeria, if you look at the uh, uh, rebels in, in Burkina Faso, if you look at uh, 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 Boko Haram, if you look at bandits, if you look at um, uh, other people of, in the areas where ISOP or ESN are operating, so all this, and the all other part of West Africa, you don't have specific time or dressing for any type of criminal. 
So most of the criminalities that are being conducted in the forest and um, in, in the communities and uh, by, by on the road are not really being conducted by people who have any sign that you can understand and alert the public also. But these places where I make mention are mostly the most vulnerable churches, mosques, uh, and, and other traditional gatherings. Essentially, you know, in December, we used to have a lot of activities. Activities by groups, traditional groups, religious groups, uh, friends groups. A lot of weddings are coming up, and uh, a lot of other traditional activities. So probably, they want to use the hotel, and a lot of people also do travel. So it can be on the roads. So there are so many places, and also the airport itself. Because when you get to the airport of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, especially the one in Elche, you will see, uh, uh, you can examine a lot of security uh, vulnerability. If at all, as the federal capital of the, of the state, of the given state, will be attacked, the university, uh, uh, someone will go into the uh, uh, University of Abuja conduct attacks successfully for a number of hours and run away. And the other vulnerability of which the FCT, uh, the University of Abuja is, as well as the Abuja and its environment. Okay, so um, what should we now be looking at? I mean, should we be thinking about building worlds? Uh, that might take a long time. I mean, because this is actually, uh, you know, an attack that might happen anytime soon one has no idea but um, we're talking about the borders now what should we do because we have those who have been you know mandated and been employed to you know protect the borders and there are certain behaviors and activities they have been engaged in in in, in some time or over the the years and uh, that has also contributed in allowing the borders you know very porous for instance i think i remember a certain adamu yakubu who explained how he comes into the country and he he finds his way in and out just by you know paying three thousand naira whether or not you have documentation so what should we be doing at the borders at this time do we need to increase the personnel or do we need to build walls what can we do to protect our borders you know the fact of the matter is um the dss the army the navy the civil defense, the migration, the customs, and all other security uh, agencies are not having adequate personnel. So definitely, we don't need the border. Because using a physical structure, the, the, the criminals will have a strategic plan for how to destroy the, those physical structures of border and their life. What we need is to recruit more partners. I have been advising the government, we have unemployed youth who are vicious, who are agile, who are enthusiastic, who are focused, who are very intellectual in our communities everywhere. So if government can engage 40 per polling unit between the age of 17 and 22, in a political world, if you have 10 polling units, you will have 400. And if in the local government, you have up to uh, uh, 10, 10 political wards, you are going to have 4,000. So if you engage these 4,000 in at least a minimum of 500 local government out of 774, it's a lot. You distribute them among customs, immigration, air force, army, navy, DSS, civil defense, customs, and others. So to ensure that you have adequate personnel who can walk around, especially to boost their morale in building their capacity in understanding uh, a, 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 a kind of um, uh, intelligence gathering, intelligence utilization, ischemic uh, operations, uh, um, and, and different types of operations and strategies. So that, and um, you also have a special force that you give them extraordinary training on certain specific things. You send them to strategic to countries where you have interest. There are countries who have uh, uh, failed in, 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 in terms of uh, managing 
security and other things like Israel, uh, like Mexico, uh, and other parts of the world. And even the France itself. So since France and all these countries have interest in Nigeria, so part of the memorandum of understanding and diplomatic relation, we are signing a number of agreements and uh, participating in a lot of conventions. Then our foreign policy should focus uh, redirecting kind of um, utilization of available resources that will boost the capacity and morale of our personnel so that they can be up and doing and up to the task in facing such challenges and uh, even get ready and prepared. You could have deal with all these bandits, Boko Haram and so on and the like. Even though I keep saying that it is the question of do we have a government? If we have a government, it's really the, the, the government uh, on, uh, 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 on seat, a serious government. Is Nigeria a sovereign state? If you can have some uh, uh, coward in uh, areas where they call forest. Because for me, in the, when you are talking about forest and you are talking of Sokoto, you are talking of Borno, I laugh at you because I know all these places. So you don't have, what you, what you don't have is, you don't have committed, commitment. You don't have practical commitment to demonstrate that you are serious in dealing with the situation on ground. All right. Um, Mr. Getzo, um, unfortunately, we are out of time, and so we would have to continue this conversation some other time and uh, hopefully get to understand, you know, more the peculiarities of the FCT and why it has remained safe uh, so far or, well, in the last couple of years. But thank you very much for joining us this morning. We will speak with you again soon. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good All right. Have a great day. We'll definitely step on the brakes now. When we uh, return, we'll head straight to, you know, the next conversation. We'll look at uh, who will become the coach of uh, Nigeria, talking about football uh, shortly after you have Genero out of the way. Please stick around. <laughs>